Well, good morning. We're going to look at Psalm 77 today. Psalm 77 is a very interesting psalm. A variety of different people have said different things about it. Uh, it's a psalm of Asaph, as we've looked at before. And so I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, I'll back up to the beginning. Uh, one particular author, uh, pastor, said that when you can't sleep, you should uh, pray this psalm. Uh, when God does not seem to be present in your life, you can pray this psalm. When you're in distress, pray this psalm. When you're depressed, pray this psalm. It sounds like this is a psalm that solves all problems. Yeah, uh, it's good. So, and I think as we look at it, it, it definitely does... Uh, it's honest. It it doesn't fool around with lies. It's real to life. I think you'll really appreciate it today. Um, mm -hmm. One pastor said, "You can put any problem into this, and if you don't have any, just wait a day. Then you'll have a problem <laughs> that you can use with this psalm." So yeah. it's and that's true. I, I mean, we might not have a problem today. It's kind of like we went around a minute ago with prayer requests. You know, some of us have some right now, but wait a day and you'll have some. And um, and that's what that's why. Okay. Yep, Psalm 77 is about. Uh, so we're going to look at, you know, faith and how you put that into practice. It will give you rest. So let's get right in. Uh, I want to go through the psalm uh, verse by verse today. Sometimes I like to read the whole thing as a whole, and that's a really good practice. But for today, we're just going to go slow through it and kind of examine what you do with this problem or prayer request that you have. So it starts out, for the director of music, for Jedithan of Asaph, a psalm. And I'm not too sure about this Jedithan. Um, doesn't really have too much of uh, notes in my Bible, but if this is a person or place or an event, um, but it's uh, definitely for for them. So the it's from Asaph, and we talked a lot about Asaph in last week's uh, Psalm. 76. So if you want to go back and look at that, you can. But of course, he's the uh, appointed music director of David. Now, there are other men by the name of Asaph, but it seems they're all from the same family. So, you know, like Asaph Jr. and Asaph Jr. Jr., but they are oh, Levites. We're there. <laughs> But I, I believe this is actually Asaph, uh, David's, uh, the one that was the prophet, because it seems to be all of them fall into that category. And of course, it's a psalm. And, and just to revisit what the word psalm means, it means literally to pluck. So if you're a guitar player, you pluck the strings or strum the strings. Um, and it comes to mean a, an accompanied uh, poem that is sung. And so that's kind of what we think about when you have a psalm, you sing it and to God. And it, it is good. Uh, this morning I was coming to church and on KSCJ, they had a, a discussion about jingles and and probably all of you know some jingles, right? Ba -da -bum -ba -dum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, what's that? That's McDonald's' sure. jingle. Yeah. Um, and, and we could go through a whole bunch of them. When you hear a particular tune, you think of a particular company. And it's the same thing. If I were to hum, da 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 you would all say, Amazing Grace. Yeah, Amazing Grace. That tune conjures up a lot of things. When when I hear that, I, I think, yeah, I'm a, how God saves an, a sinner like me, a wretch like me. Yes. So 
and and I think the same with the Psalms. We don't know the, these tunes, but the when you hear a particular song, it would come to mind. And so that's why having music with them is so great. Yeah. So, okay, let's dig into the actual Psalm itself. Uh, it, you remember the introduction, though, is part of the psalm, so that's why I read it as Bible itself. So it starts out, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to, the, to God to hear me. Now, notice he doesn't tell what he's crying out for. He's writing this so that we can use whatever is going on in our life in the psalm. Um, there's... Obviously, the Asaph himself probably had a particular problem he was bringing to God, a reason that he couldn't sleep, uh, a stress, a depression. Something's going on in his life, and so he's taking it to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. So it's very general, and every one of the Psalms is this way, um, except for maybe Psalm 51 mentions at the top that David prayed, you know, create in me a clean heart, O God, when he had committed adultery. So the original psalm had a particular context, but really we can cry that whenever we've sinned. So he says, verse 2, when I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out on tiring hands, and I would not be comforted. So you can see why some pastors will use this psalm to say when you can't sleep at night. Uh, so he's praying to God and he just can't get to sleep. Even after he prayer or prays, he still can't sleep. Have you, have you ever had that happen? That you're, you're doing everything right. Um, you've been, I don't know about you, but you're taught that when you're having a trouble, you go to God in prayer and then you expect God to, answer right away and then all of a sudden you can sleep but he's praying and then he still can't sleep yeah or or you the right thing to do is to read the scriptures when you're going through a problem and that brings you comfort but then you can't sleep even though you've done everything right so so sometimes even when you do it right you still can't sleep um, he's being honest. I don't know about you, but that happens to me. I do the right things yeah. and I still can't sleep. Uh, yes. <laughs> things still bother me. So I would not be comforted. I, it, it didn't solve it. So he goes on. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated and my spirit grew faint. So he's doing the right things. Remember, return to the Lord your God, for he's gracious and merciful. He remembers God, but he's still groaning. Uh, and that can be true sometimes in our grief, too. We lose a loved one. You go to God. You remember him. You remember that he died on the cross. He rose again, but you still hurt, even when you're doing all the right things. Uh, verse 4, you kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. Now, this is interesting. He, he can't, so he's kind of blaming God a little bit here. You kept my eyes from closing. You're the one that's keeping me from sleeping. I was true, and he doesn't know what words to use. This is bothering him so much. So you see what I mean? He's being very honest. This isn't just a nice psalm, but he's, he's telling God exactly how he feels. So if you can't sleep, pray Psalm 77. So here's a question for you. Can you relate to Asaph? Have you ever had trouble that you don't even know what to say or you can't sleep? Let's talk about Yeah, yeah go ahead. Well, I guess I, I can't put it into words right now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You're like ASAP. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can't put it into words. Um, and I've, I've had that things like that happen where 
maybe I have a trouble with another person and you pray about it, Lord, help me to deal with them. But then I still can't sleep because I still got to go deal with them. <laughs> um, and so it's still on the mind. So it could be something like that or a problem that just don't go, go away. Um, maybe you have a pain in, in your back and you pray, Lord, take it away, but then it stays. Yeah. Okay. Let's shift a little bit here. Um, the next section of the psalm, he's going to start thinking about good things that God has done in the past. And have you, you remember that verse in the New Testament that says, I believe it's in Philippians that you should think about whatever is good, whatever is right, whatever is praiseworthy. You should think about these things. In other words, occupy your mind with good things rather than sinning and occupying them with evil and uh, hate and so on and so forth. Um, so that's what he's going to do next. And so I've got a question here to get us thinking about this. What are the glory days like? Uh, uh, versus what is today like so if when, when you're going through a problem you remember back to when things were good uh, like me I remember days when I could just work 16 hours a day and not get tired that doesn't happen anymore uh, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it I can't do anything what were the glory days yeah, what are the glory days like? What's the glory days like in your life? Well, not many. <laughs> not many? Maybe, maybe it would be, I remember when all the family was together for Thanksgiving dinner. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or maybe you remember days when all the family was together in church sitting in one pew. Yeah. I, I mean, that would be a glory day. Uh when it seems like God was working and everybody's well, uh, everybody's doing the right thing. <laughs> uh, don't we do that all the time? We, we say, you know, I remember back when there wasn't a pandemic and everybody could just oh, yeah. go everywhere without a mask, not worried about this or that. And But then we look at today and we say, oh, I don't see that. Is, is God working? I, I mean, can't we go back to the glory days? Now, what's ironic is there's no such thing as glory days. Because <laughs> if, if you went back to that good old day, there was probably bad things going on that day, too, even though we weren't really experiencing it at the time. Yeah. Okay, so that's what the psalmist does. He, he's having trouble sleeping, so he thinks back when things were better. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked. So, and we'll kind of look at verse six a little bit more, but he's, he's thinking about when it was good, when God was working powerfully and- Well, he remembered his songs in the night. Was that when he was praying and singing to God? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, he's got songs of praise probably on his mm -hmm. heart. Uh, because a lot of times we think about good songs when we're mm -hmm. going to sleep. And, and you just, you sleep well. But the, so then he kind of turns here in verse six, there's kind of a turn in the right in the middle of the verse, my heart meditated and my spirit asked and he asked six questions. And actually, Howard, would you be up for reading? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where do you want to start at? Yeah, right at verse seven there. Seven, okay. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he, anger, has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. Okay, yeah. 
stop right there. Um, so there's these six questions that come to him, and they're really all the same question. He's mm -hmm. just saying them in different ways. So notice, I remembered my songs in the night, and then my heart meditated, and my spirit asked. So he's he's basically saying, well, God at one time was really good. Things were good in my life, and now I'm asking, will the Lord reject forever? In other words, God, are you going to, is it going to be like this where uh, my loved ones are always dying, where I'm always having pain or where I'm having to deal with hard people in my life? I don't know what to do with. And it seems God is, is rejecting. Will he never show his favor again? Will, will I not have grace, undeserved love? Um, unfailing love that's another way to say grace um, has his promise failed for all time and what promise is he he's saying here well god says i will be with you always to the end of the age and so right now the psalmist with an unanswered prayer feels like god is not with him kind of scary yeah yeah this is scary uh to not have and this is what he's experiencing that's why i say when you pray, it's good to be honest about it. If it looks like God isn't working, then you ask that question. Or verse 9, has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Now, what's the answer to all these questions? No, he still knows. Yeah, so the, the answer would be no to every one of it, but but right now in the psalmist's life, he's thinking, I, I don't see anything good. Um, he's, he's bringing these to God and saying, Lord, there, I'm not seeing the kind of God I know. And he's sometimes not on the, or we're not on the same time level, I guess, I think. Sure, same sure. Pace as the Lord is. You know, the Lord may be working, but we're not seeing it, you know. He yeah. has his own schedule. Yeah, his own schedule, yeah. There's yeah, a star yeah. out there. Yeah. Yep, those are good points. Um, yeah. I found this uh, quote uh, for verse 10. Um, there was this pastor I, I was uh, watching ahead of our time together, and he, he feels that the literal... Uh, Hebrew uh, verse 10 gives a little bit more clarification on this. Uh, if you read verse 10 in the NIV, as I have here, it says, Then I thought to this I will appeal the Lord years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. In other words, the psalmist kind of turns here and goes, You know, I asked these questions, but I need to go back and look up what God actually does. But a literal translation of this gives you a little different understanding. Um, it, literally, it says, then I thought my, brief, my grief or pain um, is the changes of the right hand of the Most High. In, in other words, he's thinking God has changed. In, in other words, his right hand his, is not is the cause of the pain. Um, it seems that God is acting differently right now. And, and I thought that's an interesting, um, I can see why the NIV translated this out because no one wants to think of God that way, but I, I, I actually think that makes more sense than the NIV. Um, because when we look at God, we say, whoa, Lord, it doesn't look like you're doing your normal your thing. Um, in fact, in theology, we call this um, the alien hand of God. There is the normal hand of God. In, in other words, God is uh, normally we think of him as showing his grace and mercy and love. And that's or, or sometimes we call that the known God. That's the God that we know from the Bible. He, he shows his love. But here, right now in his life, he's seeing an alien or unknown form of God. 
God, what I'm seeing right now doesn't seem normal or uh, for what you say. Now, does God sometimes act in um, foreign ways that I don't yes. understand? Yeah, he does. Yes. But that's causing him grief right now or pain. Um, so it, it's a, this is a very literal translation. Um, but I think the literal translation makes more sense than the smoothed out version that uh, they do in the NIV here. Um, and I'll show you why it makes more sense as we go on um, in a second. But I wanna show you a real short video and make some comments on this. As I was preparing, I found this really, really neat video um, by uh, Joni Erickson Tada. Um, she was in a diving accident in, and I assume that's the, uh, the kind of diving where you dive off of a diving board into a pool. Mm -hmm. And apparently she broke her spinal cord. Uh -huh. And the result of that was, you know, paralysis. I mean, she's a, not a quadriplegic, but a, a paraplegic. So she can't use her legs as a result. And in the, I want to show you this video because she, uh, um, you'll be able, and even if you can't see it, you'll be able to listen to it. Um, and these six questions of the psalm really helped her through her problems. So let me uh, see if I can exit out of this. Whoops. Well, maybe I can exit out of it. Here we go. So one thing about technology, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't work as well as I'd like. Okay, no, let's no. go over here. Okay. I don't know if you can, let me try something else. You're not hearing it. I'm gonna hit share sound here. Okay, let me know if you can hear this, okay? I'm gonna hit play. Yeah, we can hear it. Yeah. Good. Hi, I'm John Erickson Tata. You know, many years after that diving it. accident, I could not fathom living in total paralysis. I became depressed and angry. I felt cheated. But then someone showed me Six questions in Psalm 77. Now get this, the psalmist asks, will the Lord reject us forever? Will he never show us his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? All six questions are a reality check because all the answers to those questions are no, God has not rejected you. His love has not vanished. His promises have not failed. But listen, these questions honor God because they show that when you voice them from the book of Psalms, you are being honest before the Lord and you are looking to him for honest answers. So, friend, wrap your anguish around a Psalm and know that the answer, all the answers rest with him. Because you know what? Jesus doesn't just give the answers. He always is the answer. Answer with a capital A. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. I... Now it won't stop. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to comment a little bit on um, this particular video. I, I thought it, oh no. Boy, this thing won't stop. What? Okay. Good thing. Oh, there we go. Now, now we got out of it. I, I really liked it because those questions, I mean, she was dealing with this accident, not being able to move, and she realized she can ask tough questions of God. And, and I think that's important for us not to just simply say, well, I'm, I'm questioning God and I shouldn't do that. 
No, if you're feeling those questions, you need to ask God. That, that's kind of the point of the psalm. Um, when you're experiencing the alien or foreign work of God, and it doesn't seem to match what the Bible says about God, ask it. Um, and he will answer. Um, and obviously, like she pointed out, Jesus is ultimately the answer. He Will he show his grace again? Yeah, he will. Maybe not the way we expect. He, he's going to show it with um, Jesus by dying on the cross for our sins so that we're saved forever. So that's kind of what we mean by that. Um, okay. Any comments on that? I, I want to go back over to our uh, my little slide here. Um, what I thought was good about this, this Joni and friends, this lady, she started a, a group that works um, for people that have disabilities. And if, if you ever get a chance, it's a pretty good website, Joni and friends sharing hope through hardship. And she points out that over 1 billion people have different disabilities. And, and with of course, Psalm 77 was the psalm that kind of changed her. She realized that God can still use her um, in what she is doing. Um, even though she's in a wheelchair, she's still able, she's doing a, I'm actually, she does more than I do, um, a radio broadcast and a podcast and a, um, so to make a difference in people's lives. It's very inspirational. Um, that, and a good verse that goes along with this is where Paul has the thorn in the flesh. You remember that? The, and he prays to God, Lord, take this, this thorn away. And God says, no. And then, then he realizes your grace is sufficient. Your power is made perfect in weakness. And that's kind of the point of this Joni's ministry as well. Sometimes God doesn't take the, the problem away, but instead he works through the problem. Um, and so she's been very effective of using the very problem she has um, after this diving accident to make a difference in other people's lives. So, so the very difficulty becomes... Um, a strength for her. Um, yeah. Any yeah. thoughts on that? I, I really like that story. Okay. You guys are all just listening today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. I'm just maintaining. You're, on you're kind of coming in here. And yes. Okay. Here's one of a, a good verse, but it's a toughie. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. So it's okay to ask the question, and, and you might end up with this as the answer, that that trial is could be developing something in you or god could work through it another example would be um and i've i've heard this story over and over again where somebody ends up being in the hospital and you think oh what a horrible thing but then they were able to witness their faith to the person next to them which may have not happened if they weren't there um so it's God can use these things, but it's still good to ask the question, you know, is your grace, are you going to abandon me forever? Um, because it doesn't seem good. There, we are wondering, where is God working in all of this? Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's keep going in the psalm. Uh, talked about the uh, oh, yeah, this is Pastor Jordan Roberts. I thought this was a good point. Expect when you are not sleeping, you may get it wrong. <laughs> you might be saying, the Lord is abandoned. 
Mm. And, and that's okay because that's what it seems like you're going on. But, but then you realize as you ask the question that God may be working and you just didn't see it before. So I, I thought that was an interesting way to put it. Okay, let's look at the end of the psalm. I, now, now we kind of see the change. Um, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. So he's doing the right thing again. He's going back and looking, what is God like? What, what has he done in the past? When there was a problem in the past, how did God answer it? Um, now, you can't do this with humans, right? Because you can't judge um, a person from what they did in the past. They don't often do it in the future. But with God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if you look at what he done in the past, you can guarantee he's going to be the same. He will act consistently. So like with Job, he went through the problem. And what did God do? He, he did provide. He took care of him afterwards. But he did allow him to go through the difficulty. Yeah. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. So apparently he's not sleeping, but he's going to keep looking. Anyone else want to read? Uh, Sherry, are you up for reading? I can try. Okay. Okay. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God. You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Okay, yeah. Uh, so he's as he looks back on the past, he recognized God is different. And that's what that verse means. Your God, your ways, God, are holy. In other words, you're different. You're set apart. Um, your ways are better than all other ways. Uh, I noticed in 13 that uh, what God is as great as our God, when it's written, the little g is used yeah. on what God, and then the big g on God. Yep, good point. So with, with the little g God, we're thinking of the idols. So Baal, yeah. Asherah, Buddha, uh, Allah, all these little g gods that other people turn to you know what what god if you look at what they do in comparison to the true god they don't really do anything mm -hmm. right Talk. yeah you think about it how many other gods have raised anyone from the dead mm -hmm. none or is that uh, one deal where they had where he poured water on the stuff on the sacrifice and lift the fire and the other people yeah they're starting yeah that's a good example of elijah that they, they prayed to their god and they cut themselves to get Baal to, uh -huh. to uh consume the fat sacrifice with fire and there was no fire from heaven whereas the true god um elijah, poured water on it and it burned it up <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that was under that. Ahab and Elijah. And if, remember Jezebel? She was, yeah. yeah, that's a great example of the miracles here. It um, was, yeah. Now notice this last verse here. That it says, with mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. This, this whole mighty arm thing is very common in the scriptures. For example, uh, Exodus 6.6. 6. Uh, therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with a mighty acts of judgment. So when God takes his arm um, and outstretches it, right? Isn't that what people do? I'm not, I don't got big muscles like the, uh, <laughs> but you get the idea. They, yeah. Yeah. they flex their muscles. And, and then the miracle happens. And God is described that way as he flexes his arm. He, out, he puts it out and he acts. 
Um, he doesn't just sit there and not move. He puts his arm out. He rescues the people out of Egypt. And it's the same way with us. When we're in our problem, whatever it is, or trouble or depression, uh, when we cry out in God's time, he will put his outstretched arm just as he's done in the past. Uh, what I could never understand about those times was he was in a pillar of smoke and a pillar of fire. Now, wouldn't that make you think twice about what you're doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think so. The pillar of fire well, by you know day and the pillar of cloud by night. So God's presence is nothing to be messed with either. Um, this is why sin is so dangerous. You don't yeah. act sinful before God. You have to have that sin removed. Um, so, and that's a good point, Sherry, that it, it does just, just because we call out, if we call out to God, but we are on sorry of our sins, he will definitely not answer. That's part of his, can, um, yeah. Yeah. um, yeah, if we can sin with that fire, pillar of fire and stuff for it, we can sin anytime. Yeah. 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 And, it doesn't definitely scare us too much. Yep, because we have forgiveness in Jesus, though, and we live under that, then we can appeal to his grace. But if we don't appeal to Jesus, we live in a very dangerous place. Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing you got to be careful of, uh, Psalm 8 or 77, Asaph here, he is a, a believer. He does, he is living in forgiveness as he's writing this. So, so I don't want you to think, well, he's not getting answered because he has not repented of his sins. No, he has. He's a believer. He's trusting in the mercies of God, but he's still not getting an answer. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I mean by this. Just because he's doing everything right doesn't mean he gets the answer he wants when he we wants. I don't it. understand God at times uh, how he goes about fixing our problems. You know, he's maybe up there fixing our problems, but we can't see it. So we don't know if he's doing anything or not. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, sometimes we can't see the whole the whole thing because of our whole position, country. too. Yeah, good point, Howard. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's, uh, there's just uh, about four more verses here. Let's see if I can get this to go to them. So, uh, 16 and 17. Howard, you up for reading again? Yep. Okay. The water saw you, God. The water saw you and withered. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. If the heavens resounded with thunder, your arrows flag back and forth. Okay. So again, he's talking about the past, what God has done in the past. The water saw you, God. The water saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. And I don't know if he's referring to the parting of the Red Sea here or, or crossing of the river. But, but the point is, God is, he's at work. Um, He's in control. Yeah. Yep. He's in control. The clouds pour down water. You, you know, this could be uh, maybe he's thinking of the uh, destruction of the earth with the uh, flood. Uh, and so God does act when there's problems mm -hmm. in the past and in, in our present. He will do that as well. So, it, again, he leaves it very wide open here. It, we're not told which things that he's referring to in the past but it kind of and this is what's so great about poetry it it helps you kind of open up and see a lot of bible passages yeah um, we can think of jesus i mean he walked on water he uh he calmed the seas he of course raised the dead i mean he's doing all these sorts of things yeah um, Carol, are you up for reading? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah, go ahead. 
Your timber, your thunder was heard in the world when your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, through your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Okay. Yeah. So now we're kind of told what he's referring to, the the uh, crossing of the Red Sea here. Now, I, I think this is really neat. Um, you know, the poem Footprints, right? You know, you look back at your life and you mm -hmm. see the, uh, uh, yeah, just one set of footprints when the troubles were going on in the person's life. And then it says, you know, it's, it's Jesus caring. And that's kind of the neat part of the poem. But when we look back at our life, you often don't see that other set of footprints. And, and that's what he points out here. If we're really honest, we might not see God's footprint, but yet we know he was working. We know they're really there, those footprints, you just can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, because remember with the crossing of the Red Sea, how Moses lifted up his hands and God parted it, you could see the wall of water on both sides. Um, but you didn't see God. He was there. He was working. And, and, and same is true in us, too. Sometimes we see the, the miracle, but you don't see the footprints. In other words, I don't see a, um, after the fact some sort of monument that shows up oh, God's size 100 shoe <laughs> in the sand. Uh, I just see the the results afterwards. Yeah. And what amazes me is we can stand there and see the sea parted like that, and then later on, sin. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and you know, none of us are, we're all affected by the same way, you know. We all sin, but it, we're amazing people. We just go our own way, I think. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah, it, it's easy for us to, even though we've seen God do these great things, to just revert to our own, own sinful ways. And that's why I think we're in a constant, um, it was Martin Luther, he said that, uh, you know, every day is, I wake up anew and with contrition, sorrow in my heart and and repentance, but then every day I realize Jesus died for me anew this day, and I have forgiveness, and, and I live in that grace. Yeah. Good, constant reminder. Well, the last verse, that verse 20, seems like whenever I move this, I can't get to it. Okay, here we go. Verse 20 kind of uh, concludes everything. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. <clears throat> and that's, that's a good reminder to us. God led those people for 40 years in the wilderness. And mm -hmm. sometimes everything was good and sometimes it wasn't. But God led them despite that. And, and I think that's probably with our prayer request too. We do want to pray it, whatever it is on our heart, and know that God will answer it eventually um, in his time and his way. Yeah. And But at the moment, it doesn't seem like he's answering it, or we might not see his footprints right when he's doing it. Because but he is working. So. I don't think we're very strong creatures. Mm-hmm. You know, 